Hello everybody, it's James, and today I thought I'd bring you all another video on orthodoxy and speaking in tongues. And today I'm going to be talking about St. Andrew the Fool for Christ. And his feast day is commemorated on the 28th of May and October the 2nd. So he either has two feast days on the 28th of May and October the 2nd, or I'm not sure, but it might be a, possi a possible difference between uh, Greek and Slavonic tradition, but I'm not positive. So I found his life under both those dates in the books that I'll show later on in the video. So his life was written by the priest Nikephorus of Agia Sophia, and he was of Slavic descent and lived in Constantinople. He was gifted with heavenly visions, the gift of knowledge, of prophecy, and of tongues, and he lived as a fool for Christ. St. Andrew's disciple was Epiphanius, who many scholars agree to be St. Polyeuctus, who is commemorated on February 5th, and who was Patriarch of Constantinople from 956 to 970, and the source for that is Orthodox Wiki. So for some of you who might not know, the Fools for Christ were particular saints who lived in such a way that their manner of life caused the world to think that they were foolish. And so I have a couple examples that I can talk about. So two fictional examples I'll cover first. So for the uh, some of you might have read this, some of you might not have, but uh, Lars is a basically historical fiction about a fool for Christ and also the movie Ostrov, or uh, in English, this is called The Island. And you can get this uh, and watch it on DVD, or you can watch it on uh, YouTube. And I actually put together a Orthodox movie YouTube list, and I'll probably put that in the description. So if you want to find the link, you can. Two other examples of Fools for Christ include St. Nicholas of Pskov and St. Simeon of Emesa. And um, I have two godsons who actually took those saints and the icons pictured in the video were commissioned for them. So just covering some of the sources that we have for the life of St. Andrew in English, uh, the one I'll be reading from today will be from the prologue, and this is uh, volume two, and the date is October 2nd, and that's on page 356 in this edition. And then also I have here page 288 to 294 in volume five, of the Synaxer, and this is the May to June volume. And so this is quite a bit longer than the entry in the prologue, but it is not nearly as long as the life that's in the Synaxeristes. So this, uh, the great Synaxeristes set here, this is uh, for the May, uh, May entry, and it's page uh, 1,206 to page 1,280. And I actually went through the whole life in here in order to get kind of an idea of who St. Andrew was. So it took me a while to actually get through that life. And it's actually from the great Synaxeristes that we get the account of him speaking in Syriac. So this is the account given for October the 2nd in the prologue on page 356. Andrew was a Slav by birth. As a young man, he was enslaved and was bought by Theonostus, a wealthy man in Constantinople during the reign of Emperor Leo the Wise, son of Emperor Basil the Macedonian. Andrew was handsome in body and soul. Theonostus took a liking to Andrew and allowed him to become literate. Andrew fervently prayed to God and with love attended church services. Obeying a heavenly revelation, he adopted the ascesis of foolishness for Christ. Once when he went to the well for water, he tore off his clothes and slashed them with a knife, feigning insanity. Saddened by this, his master Theonostus found him in chains and brought him to the church of St. Anastasia, the deliverer from bonds, so that prayers would be read for him. But Andrew did not improve, and his master freed him as mentally ill. Andrew pretended insanity by day but prayed to God all night long. He lived without shelter of any kind. He even spent the nights outside, walked around half naked in a single tattered garment, and ate only a little bread when good men would give it to him. He shared all that he received with beggars, would mock them to avoid being thanked by them. For Holy Andrew wanted all his reward to come from God, 
Therefore the great grace of God entered into him, and he was able to discern the secrets of men, perceive angels and demons, exercise demons from men, and correct men from their sins. Andrew had a most beautiful vision of paradise and the exalted powers of heaven. He also saw the Lord Christ on his throne of glory, and he with his disciple Epiphanius saw the most holy Theotokos and the church of Blacherne, as she covered the Christian people with her amaphorian. This occurrence is celebrated as the feast of the protection of the most holy Theotokos on October 1st. In a vision, he also heard ineffable heavenly words that he dared not repeat to men. After a life of almost unparalleled harshness of ascesis, Andrew entered into rest in the eternal glory of his Lord in 9-11. This is the account of him speaking in tongues, which is taken from page 1235 here in this volume of the great Synaxarestes of the Orthodox Church. And this is the volume for May. And just a little bit of the backstory here. We have uh, Epiphanios and St. Andrew talking. And so here's the quote. Now, while they were having this conversation, one of the men servants of Epiphanios, the moment he set eyes on Andrew, perceived the manner of the righteous one's labor, a foolishness for God. The lad sat at the feet of the saint, beseeching him with tears to entreat God that he too might take upon such a work as his. The righteous Andrew, knowing with the gift of clairvoyance what the manservant was asking, wished to speak to him privately regarding it. Andrew thereupon, by the power of the Holy Spirit, converted their tongue into that of the Syrians. Thus, both Andrew and that manservant were speaking Syriac. The servant then began asking, Supplicate the Lord that I might become even as thou art. The venerable man responded, Thou art not able to endure the profuse perspiration and the toils of such a virtue. For narrow and afflicted is the path which leads to the kingdom of the heavens. But it is better for thee to remain as thou art, abiding here in piety, that thou mightest be taught by thy master piety in all that is needful for thy salvation. Epiphanius, seeing and hearing how that manservant had instantly changed his language and spoken a tongue which he had never heard, marveled and exclaimed, Oh, the wonder, wondrous is God and his saints. So that concluded what I want to talk about, the uh, life of St. Andrew. That life is quite lengthy and is actually a good read. has other things in it uh, that kind of stood out to me. Um, for example, some of the uh, sexual sins that are now becoming prominent. Um, it are condemned a lot in that life, which I was actually surprised to read. And um, so it uh, condemns pederasty, for example. In addition to the life of St. Andrew, there are a few more lives left that I've yet to go over that uh, will conclude, uh, at least as far as I know, conclude the Orthodoxy and Speaking in Tongues videos for the hagiography sections. Um, there's at least three more lives I think that I haven't covered and I'll continue to do more research to try to find more saints that spoke in tongues. So if you like this content, feel free to subscribe. And if you would like to put a comment in the comment section, feel free. I try to respond to those in a timely manner. So this is James until next time signing out.